Relays have been around for a long time, and they will continue to be. However, their function, like everything else, is moving into the computer-controlled world. What is the difference between a traditional mechanical relay and a computer relay? And what is the difference in how we test them? Well, you need to understand this so that you won't make a mistake when you are testing them. Relays are simply switches that use electromagnetism to convert a small current flow to switch on and off a high current flow. Let's take a look at the diagrams for both of these. Here's a basic diagram of a mechanical relay. And like a coin, they have two sides. A control side that uses electromagnetism to engage or switch the contact side and a contact side that actually completes the continuity so that the power can actually flow. Now let's get more specific here. This is a basic horn diagram with two horns, a mechanical push button switch, and a clock spring. Now keep in mind all diagrams are drawn at rest, which means nothing is working. Both power and ground will stop at an open. Now here's the ground at rest, and we add the power at rest. Now remember, a good device will have continuity, which means whatever comes to it will pass right through it. The horns have continuity, so the ground will come to them and pass right through them. And on the power side, the fuse, the coil inside the relay, and the clock spring all have continuity. So the power will come to them and pass right through them as well. Now let's activate this circuit. The mechanical switch closes when you push the horn button. Now this now allows continuity of ground all the way to the coil which is inside the relay. And I've colored that yellow because it is switched ground. The coil inside the relay is a resistance load. So that's where power meets ground and the coil energizes and becomes an electromagnet. The electromagnetic force from the coil pulls the contacts closed and that allows current to flow to the horns. Orange indicates that it is switched power or current and the horns off. And now note, this is a mechanical switch controlled relay not a computer-controlled relay. This is a computer-controlled relay. It is also a radiator cooling fan diagram instead of a horn diagram. Let's look at the differences. Here is the computer and here is the load. The ground has continuity to and into the relay but it stops there at an open. Notice that there is nothing inside the solid box. That's because it is all circuitry. There are no moving parts. So it really doesn't stop. It enters into the circuitry, but we have no way to visually follow that. Now, I realize at this point that you may be confused, and that's when I made this video. So now let's look inside that solid box. The voltage comes directly from the battery and the continuity to the relay stops there. And again, I say it stops, and for all practical reasons, it does. Now remember, all diagrams are drawn at rest, so at rest, it stops there. Now let's talk about all of this for a moment. Let's look closely at both diagrams. The mechanically switched diagram is on the left, and the computer switch diagram is on the right. On the mechanically switched relay, you can see that the engineers show us an actual mechanical diagram inside that relay because there are moving parts in there and that's why it is called a mechanically switched relay. Now on the computer switched relay, the engineers don't show us anything inside the relay. It's not because there is nothing in there, it's because there are no moving parts in there. That's why it is called a computer switched relay. Now we know that power and ground must connect if that load is going to work. So what connects them? Well the computer control connects them when it commands it on. 
The computer is a logic device. It gets an input from the temperature sensor and sends out an output to command the relay on. Now I've kept the colors consistent here with their part of the circuit. Blue is control, orange is current flow, and green is ground. Now this all happens through a transistor. A transistor is a semiconductor device used to switch electronic signals on. Now here's where the transistor lives. So if we could see this transistor, this is what it would look like. Now let's complete the connection to that transistor. We know that power stops at an open. That doesn't look like an open, does it? Well, not like an open that you are used to. That's because transistors are different. In part two of this video, I will explain this in more detail, but for now, let's just continue. When the temperature switch reaches the correct temperature, it sends an input signal to the computer. The computer's logic sends an output signal to the fan relay, which closes the transistor switch. And this allows current to flow out of relay pin number three and onto the fan itself. That's where power finds ground and the motor runs. Now mechanical relays come in two forms. They are either normally open and when energized the magnetic force closes the contacts or they are normally closed and when energized the magnetic force opens the contacts and stops current flow. And depending upon the manufacturer and the application they can have either three, four, or five pins. They all work the same way. The difference between them is simply where they route power once they are energized. On a mechanically switched relay, the top picture is a typical electrical diagram of what's inside it. And the bottom picture is an actual cutaway of what's inside. There are actually moving parts in there. And here is a zoomed in view so that you can see it better. On the computer switched relay, the right picture, is a typical electrical diagram, and the left is an actual relay. There are no moving parts. It's all circuitry. As you can see, they are completely different, but different doesn't mean you can't understand it. So let's take a closer look. This is what you are used to, right? And it makes sense. But the computer controlled relays use transistors and the terminology can be confusing at first. An open switch stops flow, right? But in a transistor, an open switch allows flow. Sounds confusing? Well in part two, which is short, I will explain this in a way that will hopefully clear this all up.